Uh, I am doing a very simple, hopefully a fairly quick video to keep Kevin happy uh, in response to a number of things, questions, comments. And this is a really good classic example of a first stage regulator from the um, 70s, 60s, 70s, and so on, for many, many years. And the beauty of this regulator is how simple it is. It's very, very simple. I'm going to show you in one second. <laughs> the good news is that for older regulators, you really don't need specialized tools. Now, if, if you have a, a decent, now I don't mean a piece of junk, a decent flat screwdriver, a decent, in fact, I got them all right here. I'm going to take a picture of these things for Kevin. Uh, if you have a decent socket wrench, a couple of sockets, screwdriver, uh, ordinary Allen keys, and then you can, you can service these old regulators very easily just with that stuff. Let me show you how. So we're going to take a few minutes and talk about whether or not you need specialized tools. The answer is no, you don't. You may if it's a newer rig. I'm going to talk a little bit about this old regulator. Scuba Pro uh, Mark II, very, very famous regulator. It looks quite uh, normal. It has a yoke screw on the top here, which I'm going to take right out for just a, re uh, just a moment. You'll understand why in just a second. Take it right out of there. And this is actually not the earliest model. This particular uh, uh, first stage, and specifically the yoke, this part, and the yoke screw is made for 3,000 PSI, which is the pressure today. But the earliest version of this was made for the early steel tanks, which were 2250 working pressure, could be filled to 2475. So the yokes were made for 2500 PSI maximum. Now they're made for 3,000 PSI. And you can tell the difference because on the early one, this yoke arm is quite thin for the 2500. There's a big difference. This is just built much sturdier on them. So that's the only difference. And then, so we get the uh, yoke screw out of there. Now, down inside there, there's a big nut. Kevin could take a couple of pictures. A big nut down in there. And that is always on too tightly. I don't know what it is, but for some reason, service people, they uh, seem to want to put that on really tightly. So in order to get that nut out of there without destroying everything, pardon me, all you need is a one inch socket. Now, look, it has to be a special socket. It's called a shallow socket. This is smaller than a short socket. There's long, short, and then there's shallow. This is a shallow one-inch socket. And that one-inch socket is probably worth getting because it fits all, even modern regulators today. It's exactly the same. So now you reach down through the yoke screw, put your socket wrench in there, and you undo the yoke nut. Get these out of the way. So that's the yoke nut. Let's take some of these parts out of here. While I'm doing this, I want to point out about that rubber ball, that black rubber ball. That was a Skiver Pro exclusive, exclusive Skiver Pro uh, uh, dust cap. I don't know why they call them dust caps, Kevin. There's no dust underwater. But anyway, dust cap. Just like you have today, you have a dust cap for it. But this was pretty neat. It was a hard rubber ball. The very best possible seal. You didn't have to put it in any special way. It's, it's a rubber ball. It's the same on every side. So you put it in there, put the screw down tightly, no dust or water or anything else getting in there. It was a pretty good idea. So now there's the actual yoke. There's your yoke screw and your yoke and the yoke nut. Just that simple. Now if you look down inside there, you'll see <clears throat> the filter. I don't know if you... We'll take a close-up of that later. There's a little filter. And in this particular version, which is an older version, it's held in there by a neat little star-shaped clip. I can pull that out of there because it, too, is unique. So you take out that little star, and right behind that is the washer. And then down underneath that, there's an O-ring. So there you go. There's the whole bottom end of the regular. There's nothing else. That's it. Okay? Interestingly enough, this filter, if you're trying to restore one of these, is the same as today's filters. These filters, diameter doesn't change very much. There are slightly different diameters available. And thickness doesn't change very much. With this particular design, the thickness doesn't matter because you put the O-ring in, you put the filter in, and then you put this little star disc down in on top of it. Now, technically, you're supposed to replace this because once you push this in and the four or five little legs stretch and they grab the side of the hole and they hold the filter down. Once that happens, they're kind of ruined. You're supposed to replace them. But I know lots and lots of uh, service people, not me, would take that star 
and they have a goal like that and reuse it. <laughs> anyway, kind of interesting how you get it down in there. You hold it on top like so, and then you take a little socket like this and you push it. It goes down, holds that filter and all ring in place. It actually is pretty simple. But the sear clip is certainly an awful lot sturdier, stronger, if you like, and that's why it's used in, in all modern regulators today. But just a little bit of history here as well, and explaining about some of those clips. So there we go. There's the uh, bottom end of the, uh, of the first stage of this old regulator. Now, you'll notice that there are some ports on it. I mention that because ports weren't all that common. You must remember that by the, in the mid-70s, <clears throat> the, uh, there were no BCDs, no power inflate BCDs anyway, and uh, safe seconds, octopuses, if you like, have not, uh, were not common at that point. Uh, they did have SPGs. Yeah, very good friend of mine, and unfortunately no longer with us, Sam Lecoque was the first man to have an SPG, Sportsways of his company, and that came out in about 60, 61, 62, somewhere around there. But they still weren't popular with divers. A lot of divers still using the J-valve, you know. When you run out of air, you reach back, you pull the reserve, you get some more air. So they didn't want to have an SPG. But it does have ports. Now, I want to mention about these ports because there's something kind of interesting about those as well. There are two styles of port plug ports are the same, just a threaded hole. Two styles of port plugs. One is this big square nut, right? which you take out with a socket. Socket fits over that, half inch socket, take it out, okay? And it's sealed with an O-ring. We'll take a picture of that as well. The other style, the modern style of these plugs is a little flat sort of rounded thing with an Allen hole in it, takes an Allen key. So it's, it's a little smoother and everything else, maybe a little bit more secure. So we'll take those up and put them to one side. They're not terribly important. Now, having done that, all you have to do now is unscrew the top. The top unscrews like so. There's the body. Nothing in there. Literally, there is nothing in there. Down at the bottom of that hole, we can't even take a picture of that, Kevin, but down in that bottom of that hole, there's a, there's a tiny orifice. Fancy name for a hole, and it has a little raised ring around it. It's raised a little bit with a sharp edge on it. You'll see why in just a minute. What's in the cap here? Well, there's a spring, and we're going to take the piston out. Yeah, this is a piston regulator. We'll take the piston out of there, and there's the cap, and there's the piston. That's it. So we got on this end of the regulator, we have the body, the spring, the cap, but in between, there is the piston. Let's take the piston apart. Not a big deal. Big old ring on one end and small old ring on the other end. A little bit of care taking that out of there so I don't stab myself. I don't care about the old ring. I don't want to stab my finger. I did that many, many, many times over the 50 years I was servicing. So there's a big old ring and a small old ring. And on the end, again, right on the very end, there's a white plastic, they call it Teflon now, plastic seat. It's called a seat. This is your high pressure seat. And it's just flush white plastic. And that white plastic seat goes down into the body, you see, and seals against that raised ring. Eh, that's what stops the 3,000 PSI of air from coming through. <laughs> it's just that simple. There you go. There's a whole darn thing. So basically, there is two moving parts. Piston and spring. See, two moving parts in these older style regulators. And in total, there's 14 parts in total. My gosh, some new regulators have 14 parts in the cap. <laughs> Certainly if it's a swivel. But anyway, there you go. Very, very simple. Now, for you folks that are interested in servicing older regulators, and I, I get the calls all the time, where do I get parts for my old uh, uh, regulator, my old decor, very popular, whatever it happens to be, I get, well, all you need is some O-rings. There you go, there's three O-rings in here. You can get these O-rings at any decent dive store. Hopefully, they'll sell them to you. They're very, very cheap. If he charges you more than 75 cents each, find another dive store. I didn't say that, but anyway, a buck a piece, roughly, for an old ring. And they're just standard uh, um, neoprene, uh, not neoprene, what do they call it? Uh, uh, rubber. What do they call it? Rubber o rings. The filters are exactly the same. Going to your dive store, say, I need a filter for my uh, old regulator. I've just cleaned it, didn't get dirty. Can I get a filter? Yeah, that'll cost you two bucks. And you might need a new clip, too. Clips may be 25 cents. That's it. The spring never wears out. The piston never wears out. So you replace the clip, the filter, three O-rings, new regulator. Uh-oh, I forgot about the seat. 
The seat, unfortunately, is very, very important because if your regulator is leaking, has a free flow, like that, it's probably because that seat got dirty. From bouncing up and down, it's got a ring on it, it's got dirty. So you take the seat out. Now this creates a bit of a problem because you can't buy that seat. There is a company called Trident Dive. I'll put the number on there for you. And they sell an awful lot of these bits and pieces and parts. You can't buy them from Trident Dive. But your dive store can buy them from Trident Dive for you. There is wholesale supplier, you see. So you got to get that seat out. Pretty easy, actually. Just get a long, thin thing, doesn't matter what it is. Put it up through the middle at the top. Put it on a table like that. Give it a bang, and that seat will pop out. Take it to your dive store and say, I need a new seat just like this. New first stage. Clean everything, reassemble it, new first stage. Just that easy. Well, people say, well, there's supposed to be a certain pressure. Aren't there supposed to be 145 or 150 PSI? Yes, they are. So if you have the ability, and it's fairly simple, if you look at some of my earlier videos, we uh, talk about a gauge, right? Kevin, there was a gauge on how to, how, how to read the intermediate pressure, the pressure coming from the first stage. If you have one of those gauges, you can take a look at it. Here it's 140, 145, 150, 155, 160, somewhere in that range, leave it, working perfectly. You're going to make your final breathing adjustment at the other end in the second stage. But if you want it, if it's not close to that, if it's not within 5 or 10 PSI of 150, it really should be adjusted. Well, how, how, how do you adjust this? Well, if you've been following and you're kind of mechanical, you might understand that by increasing or decreasing the pressure on that spring, you also increase and decrease the pressure of the air coming through. So there are little plastic rings. Sometimes they're metal. They can be either. It's a shim. It's a washer. It's a thin washer. So you can get these anywhere. And if you put that thin washer over the piston and then put the spring on and put it back together, you have increased the pressure on the spring. Pressure goes up. Simple, huh? And that was the beauty of regulators, scuba diving in general. In the old days, it was simple. It wasn't necessary for simple people because we were incredibly intellectual, very, very intelligent people. <laughs> but like old cars, old bicycles, and so on, it was nice and simple. It made it really, it made diving very, very easy. So there you go. There is the first stage of, a, of, a, of an older regulator, in this particular case, the Scuba Pro Mark II. I'm going to leave that with you, kind of fun, and uh, I've answered a few questions. Do you need special tools? Hey, be nice, but no. Uh, another question I should answer, kits. Kits. Where do I get a kit with the parts? You can't. The idea of kits to service regulars is relatively new. Probably started in the 80s, maybe the 90s. So now, if you take a look on the wall here, Ken, I'll, I'll pull one down. Take a look on the wall. Here's a kit for a uh, Oceanic uh, Piston SP4. First stage. There's all the parts in there. All the parts. You take all those parts out, put them down here. Take your, take it apart. Take all the old parts. Put the new, clean. Put the new part. There, there's your kit. And there's a lot of stuff in there. My gosh, there must be about 12 O-rings in there. Several filters and so on. So that is, but that's Aqualong, Hollis. They're all right there. But that's a new idea. There were no kits for these old regulators. No, no. The dive store would buy O-rings, and would buy the high-pressure seats but by the filters and so on from the manufacturing company. And as you needed them, they would replace them. So there are no kits for the old regs. You can make one if you like, but you don't really need it. If you've done this, clean it and put it back together and set it if necessary. You're all set to go. I hope there was something of interest in there. Certainly older divers or some of you making restorations, but the same principles, tools and parts and so on, the same principles apply to modern regulators. Whether or not a fairly new diver with a fairly new regulator, and by fairly new I mean less than 10 to 15 years old, whether or not you should be working, disassembling, trying to service your own, that's an issue you'll have to deal with. My suggestion is no. First of all, it's a lot more sophisticated, a lot more parts, a lot of sophistication that we didn't have in the old days. So perhaps in the new one, take it to your local dive store, but there's some ideas for you anyway. Talk to you again soon. Alec Pierce, Scuba Tech Tips here at Scuba 2000. Hope you enjoyed that.